So what I'm going to show you here is the derivation to get the velocity and the period of an object that's undergoing circular motion um, where there is a normal force as well as an angled friction force. Um, this is a like a banked turn with friction or um, like a baggage carousel on an airport. So we have friction and we have normal force. They're both contributing to the centrifugal force. So to start off, I uh, drew the force diagram here. And one thing to note is we have two forces acting in the positive y direction. And we have one force, gravity, opposing them. And those are going to need to sum to zero. And that's just from Newton's second law. So let's start off with that. So I have FNY plus the force of static friction in the y direction plus FG, which I'm just going to write as MG, is equal to zero. That's my y uh, direction here. So let's label this y. And then I can do a similar sum of the forces in the x direction. And I'm going to have two forces, one acting to the left here and one acting to the right. If we assume the centripetal acceleration is going to the left, so if this is AC, then I'm going to say to the left is positive as well. But that's just by convention or just what you want to choose. If this is inward radial, I like positive to be inward radial. All right, um, so in the x direction, we have the x component of Fn right here. So that's F and x minus the x component of static friction right here because it's a minus sign because it's going to the right in the negative direction those do not equal zero but mv squared over r because this is equal to the centripetal force the sum of the radially inward forces or outward the radial forces is the centripetal force or the net force and then we have a mv squared over r. All right then we want to break these things down and we're going to assume in this problem we're given the angle theta we're given mu and we're given r. These are our knowns. So we want to solve you know, get the velocity get the period with respect to these three variables. So I want to get rid of fn and fs and so I can just have theta, mu, r, when we get rid of uh, m, I guess we can also say we have g. So fn I can write as fn, I'm sorry, fny I can write as fn times cosine of theta plus fs here is just going to be, or fsy is going to be fs um, sine of theta. So F S times sine of theta. And then plus mg is equal to zero. Keep these two uh, separate here. Uh, Fn x, I can write that as Fn times sine of the angle. Because Fn x, so my angle here and you got to do the geometry if you don't realize this doesn't if you don't buy that this angle is up here you got to figure that out but fn x is the opposite one so we use sine minus we do fs times cosine of the angle equals mv squared over r um, let's see what else can I write uh, Fn, I'm going to leave this as is, Fn sine of theta. I think I noticed I have Fn, I have Fn, I have Fn, I have Fs. So if I can change either the Fn to Fs, normal force to, in terms of the friction force, or the friction force in terms of the normal force, that may help some things drop out. And remember that the force of static friction is equal to mu, your coefficient of static friction, times the normal force. So I'm going to rewrite Fs. Static friction is mu s times fn. So mu s times fn times cosine of theta is equal to mv squared over r. 
Over here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Fn cosine theta plus, instead of S Fs, I'm going to write mu s, mu sub s times Fn times sine of theta plus mg equals zero. And at this point, if you're solving this problem on your own, you, you may not do this right away. You may go down the wrong path, or there's other ways to do this. Um, and you just have to fiddle with it. It takes some perseverance. Um, it took me a couple tries to get it get it right. So now I look at these. I have two equations. I have, I'm going to, I know, we're assuming I know theta, or I'm going to solve it in terms of theta, and mu, and theta. So I have masses here I need to get rid of. And I have some Fn's here I need to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve both of these equations for Fn. On the left hand side I'm going to have Fn, I'm going to factor out this uh, Fn so I'm left with cosine theta over here and then mu sub s times sine theta over here and same step I'm going to move the mg to the other side. So Fn is equal to cosine of theta plus mu times sine of theta is equal to nu minus mg. The left side again, this is my y, y uh, direction, this is my x direction. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Factor out the fn. Oops, I don't I want to do that in two steps. So sine of theta minus mu sub s cosine of theta. Because the things that are left after I take out an fn are just what I have underlined there. And v squared over r. So I can solve these both for fn. So on the left hand side I get fn is equal to minus mg over cosine of theta plus mu sub s times sine of theta. And on my right hand side, I get Fn is equal to let's see, mv squared over r times this whole schmear here in the uh, parentheses. So sine of theta minus mu sub s cosine of theta. Now I have these two things that both equal Fn, and I can set them equal to each other. So I'm going to have minus mg divided by cosine of theta plus mu sub s times sine of theta is equal to mv squared over r times sine of theta minus mu sub s cosine of theta. What a mess. Uh, let's see, my masses cancel. And I can pretty easily solve this for v. So I'm going to have minus, oh, I lost a g somewhere. Oh, no, I didn't. It's right here. False alarm. Okay, so I'm going to take this thing in the denominator over here, I'm just going to move it up to the other side and multiply by, by both sides. So I'm going to have minus g times r times sine of theta minus mu sub s cosine of theta all over cosine of theta plus mu sub s sine of theta equals v squared, and instead of just writing v squared, I can take the square root of that whole thing. So now I have it solved in terms of v. What if I want, let's say, the period? Well, I know that v is equal to 2 pi r over t. So I can plug um, v into here and then solve for t or do whatever I want with that. So I'm going to have this whole schmear here. I'm just going to call it 
I'm just not a constant, minus k um, is equal to, so I have to rewrite it again, 2 pi r over t uh, multiply by t on both sides, 2 pi r over square root of k is this big mess. And so I have t is equal to this, and if I want to write it out formally, I'm going to do 2 pi r times the square root of, well, dividing is like multiplying the, by the reciprocal. So I'm going to have cosine of theta, I'm just taking the inverse of this fraction here, plus mu sub s sine of theta divided by minus g. And now when you put in g, that's negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram, times r times sine of theta minus mu sub s cosine of theta. And it's all under the square root. And so I have this thing here. Oh, just one thing to note, I should have well, I just sort of capitalize that R. And there you go. If you want to move these in the square root, or you know, just looks prettier that way, whatever you want to do. But uh, that's how you do that problem. You can solve it with respect to V, so find the velocity, or you can solve it with respect to time. That is how you find a banked curve with friction kind of from the beginning. An overview of this, what you do. Draw your force diagram. This is just Newton's second law. Some of the force is equal to zero, and then the circular motion version of Newton's second law, some of the force is equal to mv squared over r, and so the mass times acceleration. This is equal to zero because they're not accelerating in the y direction. Then what I did is I um, wrote each of the terms with respect to fn, or relative to fn, solved for fn, set those equations equal to each other, did some algebra, got v, and then use this relationship over here and did a little bit more algebra, eliminated V and just had the period. So you can find that for either either way. And there that's how you do it.